Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons again. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, OGL 1.1 again. This time we're going to talk about Critical Role making a statement and their fans not being real happy with it. Now, some people, most people actually understand Critical Role probably can't say a whole lot because of their, uh, you know, whatever agreement they have with Wizards of the Coast, they're probably not allowed to disparage the company. And if you read between the lines in this statement, it does sound like they're talking about doing more of their own stuff and maybe getting away from D&D. So not only did Wizards of the Coast piss off a large portion of fans, they might have actually lost critical role in the process. But uh, a lot of fans saying that they're not happy with the uh, non-statement uh, non the critical role gave. In fact, I knew that this was happening because of some videos I found accidentally that were recommended to me on YouTube, including this one, this uh, one from Air the Dungeon, which is uh, very, very salty. It's a very salty video, not familiar with the YouTuber, but uh, yeah, he takes him to task. He's just like, we needed you guys to stand up for us and say something before Wizards walked OGL 1.1 back and uh, you waited until after it was safe to do so, and then you gave a very non, very corporate non uh, statement. But that is, that's kind of how this works, guys. I mean, unfortunately, for better or for worse, you know, they probably have a contract with WotC. They probably can't disparage them. They probably were afraid that uh, they would get sued for disparaging them. Um, there might have been money there probably, I'm sure, positively, was money that changed hands. And yeah, you're not allowed to say stuff sometimes. I mean, you're just not allowed to. And people forget, you know, Critical Role is a business. They're not your friends. I mean, they don't seem like bad people per se. But at the end of the day, it is a business and people forget that. I remember this is the same audience that turned on them when it was revealed how much money they were making on Twitch. And people had it in their heads that it was just like a just a group of friends playing D and D and filming it, making millions and millions of dollars, not realizing like, Hey, this is like a Hollywood production, right? And they have a lot of production costs and there's a lot of moving parts. And, uh, the audience kind of turned on them then. And I think, I mean, I hate to say it cause I, I think I said before, we've actually met Matt Mercer. Uh, it was years ago. I think it was before critical role was, was really big, but, um, he was a nice guy. He was a really nice guy. And, uh, you know, I don't want anything bad to happen to him, but I think that they courted a particular audience of 5e players, a lot of them coming from Tumblr, a lot of them coming from Twitter. These are newer players. They have uh, preconceived notions about what is and is not acceptable, uh, you know, both in the game and from a business perspective. In fact, that one video I listened to, and the guy made some valid points, but it seemed like he was really like, business be damned, you're our friends, you got to do what you got to do. And, and that's not actually how it works, especially when you have people working for you and people employed under you. And we've seen them take them to task for, you know, wrong think when it comes to campaigns, they weren't sensitive enough, they weren't this enough, they weren't that enough. And at the end of the day, you know, they're going to have to be like, look, here's the line, we're not, we cannot keep changing everything we're doing to appease a small handful of people, but it does sound to me like they are thinking about creating their own system or using somebody else's system. I think they start with Pathfinder. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 287,000 subs. Please check to make sure you're still subscribed. At the beginning of the month, YouTube did some very weird stuff. Uh, our analytics disappeared for three or four days. And uh, it seems like we lost some subs as well. We're gaining them back. A lot of you are checking and making sure that you're still subscribed. So make sure you're subscribed. Ring the bell for notifications. You know the drill. So let's read Critical Role's statement. And then we're going to read these statements that are critical of Critical Role. Uh, from their official Gold Check account, because I guess that's a thing now. Critical Role has always supported creators in game development in the tabletop space. We stand by our industry peers as well as anyone who takes a risk creating a new system or developing an original idea. The beauty of gaming comes from the opportunity to share inclusive, diverse, and compelling stories from a wide spectrum of creators. That's exactly why we launched our own game publishing company a few years ago, because we believe that broadening the field of creators boosts the entire industry. 
The success we have experienced is thanks to the passion and interest of the greater tabletop community, and we commit to fostering an environment that allows everyone the opportunity to easily share the stories they wish to tell. Some of the blowback includes, I'm not a D&D guy, so I don't fully understand the situation, but man, I love corporate statements. This is one of the finest ones I've ever seen. There's literally nothing cooking, just stirring a pot of lukewarm water with a fancy spoon. Uh, this one says, if Critical Role designs their own game system, I'd play the shit so fast. I think a lot of people would. WotC had better hope that they can frisk the McElroy brothers for all they're worth because otherwise it's over. That actually, it's it's definitely going to hurt them. I mean, if Critical Role does their own Critical Role branded system, as I suspect they probably have been thinking about, then, you know, it is going to be a problem. Um, I see what you're not saying. Thanks for the statement. Uh, this is as much as they can legally say right now, but I personally believe it makes it clear where they stand. Watch as the months roll by and they're released from contractual obligations and they start making bigger moves. I, I personally think that's it. I think that they have a long-term agreement with Wizards of the Coast. They're not allowed to say certain things. There probably is a non-disparagement clause in there, which means that even lukewarm criticism of the company is verboten. Now, Matt Mercer did like some tweets that were critical of OGL 1.1. And, um, you know, but I mean, he didn't say anything per se, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I took that to mean that he wasn't real happy with it either because under those terms, Critical Role would have to cough up a lot of money and technically all their characters from their campaigns could potentially be just taken by Wizards of the Coast, right? Like most corporations, WotC contracts include clauses strictly forbidding the signer to publicly criticize or be against them with huge fines attached. That CR felt the need to run the statement despite the gag orders uh, says far, far more than any line of lawyer approved text. And there are a lot of people that are just like, you suck. Uh, why did you wait so long, etc. To the people pissed off by the statement, grow the fuck up and educate yourselves. They can't say more they're under contract. What contract? When would they agree to an NDA about OGL? Go on, you're almost there. Um, there are two kinds of people who will read this. The fans of the show who read the surface text probably feel like this is just faff that doesn't say anything. Those of us in the industry who read this, though, understand and appreciate just how powerful the show of support is. All the people, quote, retweeting this, whining about, mocking, or being pissy about CR's statement very plainly have no idea how legal contracts work. One of the most frustrating parts about publicity is you can't say flat out what you think. Say, we have a sponsorship deal with WotC, but are pissed off without saying we have a sponsorship deal with WotC, but are pissed off. That's exactly it. Actions speak louder than words, critical role. Uh, we're basically gods. WotC, Matt Mercer begins calculating fall damage. Uh, anyone who reads this is somehow in support of Watsi was just looking for an excuse to trash critical role. Absolutely third world behavior. Uh, a lot of people are, though. How to pretend to stand for something while saying absolutely nothing at all. Uh, I'm not going to blame anyone from critical role. They're under contract. So speaking out against Hasbro and Watsi is career suicide. It just sucks. Real talk. I had canceled my sub to critical role, waiting for them to comment on open D&D. &D. Today was the end of my current sub. Then they post. This post saved the day. I see the subtle nods and the nuanced language. They probably had to run it through a lawyer. This is so effing funny because it means nothing. This response is absolutely nothing, which also says everything. Everyone knows they're contracted by D&D &D and or D&D &D Beyond, and yet this is not stirring praise for the OGL announcement. It's PR doublespeak. Blink twice if you need help. Not a single mention of D&D. Well, it might be that the contract is like you can't say anything derogatory about wizards and you can't say anything derogatory about Dungeons and Dragons. And they didn't say anything about Wizards of the Coast and they didn't say anything about Dungeons and Dragons. So that might be the point. Respectfully, there was a week to write this up. I don't know what this is saying. You can tell Critical Role is a company now because they took three paragraphs to say nothing. As much as I love Critical Role, I'm willing to critique them a lot on their runnings as a business, but they are kind of forced to make this vague statement like they have been under NDAs and contracts and sponsorships for years now. That is true. I know how it works. Uh, sounds a whole lot like we can't legally say anything bad about open D&D, but we may or may not be working on our own D&D alternative that we cannot disclose at the moment. This is a ridiculously weak response, particularly from a group that rose to success based on the exact things Watsi is aiming to remove from gaming. 
This is really good and exactly what I was hoping for y'all to need to lower your expectations. This isn't some BFFs with pocket change. This is a company and an industry with restrictions and rules. That is true. This is a whole lot of nothing. It also reads to me as we currently have a contract with WOTC. This one, if someone, yeah, OSR, Jay Tanaka OSR. If someone claims to be inclusive and diverse, it means they'll exclude and cancel you if you don't side with them blindly. I hope not. Um, I knew when their statement was released, there would be people upset. Critical Role has contracts, NDAs, etc. cetera. Uh, you know you done effed up with your community when Critical Role has to say something. The whiff of milk toast corporatism. How whelming from the people most responsible for putting D&D in the hands of the people who are currently trying to destroy it. There are a lot of people that are angry. Uh, if you search Reddit and you search Twitter, you'll find there are a lot of a lot of people who are angry. This is really tiptoeing around the issue. Yeah, you can bite the hand that feeds you when it's about to hit others weaker than yourself for no other reason than greed and selfishness. This isn't rocket science. This is having some moral fiber grow a set. A lot of words to say nothing at all. Doesn't say anything. These are the responses to the original post. Uh, translation, we have choice words but are legally obligated to say not to not say them. I mean, I can see people are confused about what the message actually means. Here's a better version to understand what it means. And it's blank. I understand you can't take much of a stance right now contractually, but come on, this says nothing. It's fine. I'm not angry or anything. I just want Hasbro Wizards corporate to get away from my wall. They're not getting another penny from me. Uh, all you fans need to realize they're most likely under contract. I get it. you're legally bound to say nothing. Doesn't make it any less disappointing. I would rather have heard nothing than this hollow we love everybody response. This contributes nothing. So that's the thing. If they had said nothing, they would have gotten blasted for saying nothing. You know, I mean, there's no way to win this. And th this is the problem. When you have an audience this large and when you court a particular audience that has expectations that you are a community and not a business, you're not going to make them happy. You're going to wind up on the receiving end of it at some point. I mean, Rooster Teeth is a good example because the expectations were set, you know, years before corporate ownership, that this is what Rooster Teeth was. And then as corporate ownership start pushing more and more and uh, the fans started having higher and higher expectations, you know, and that Rooster Teeth is kind of a shell of itself. And a lot of it is their own fans kind of ate them. Yeah, I'd hate to see that happen. You know, um, and I mean, I dunk on Critical Role. I dunk on the fandom more than anything because I do think that Critical Role fans have not the show itself, but the fans that have been cultivated from Tumblr and Twitter, etc., cetera, uh, have definitely changed D&D, I think, in a lot of cases for the worst. I think we have a lot of, like, fair weather players that have come in that have had a lot of uh, political expectations and that sort of thing, which is why I prefer OSR. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a really eye-opening experience for a lot of people to see that Critical Role is a business and Watsi is a business owned by Hasbro and uh, businesses are going to business. And if you don't like it, just play something else, you know, homebrew or something. I don't know. I think there are going to be a lot of alternatives because people are getting very, very sick of all of this. So I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. We'll talk later.